Hi guys, it's Miss Karen, the Young Adult Librarian at the Goshen Public Library. And today, I've got a brand new box of books for you. And it's pretty big this time, not like the smaller ones that I've been getting. And I think it's got some great stuff in it. So, let's get right to it and see what we've got. Right. Number one book in my box is The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. You look real close. Their faces are crossed off in those pictures, so I'm guessing this is probably sort of a scary book, maybe a mystery. Let's see. Millie, Aubrey, and Jonah Story are cousins, but they barely know each other, and they've never even met their grandmother. Rich and reclusive, she disinherited their parents before they were born. So when they each receive a letter inviting them to work at her island resort for the summer, they're surprised and curious. Their parents are unwavering on one point. Not going is not an option. This could be their chance to get back into grandmother's good graces. But when the cousins arrive on the island, it's immediately clear that she has different plans for them. And the longer they stay, the more they realize how mysterious and dark their family's past is. The entire story family has secrets. Whatever pulled them apart years ago isn't over. And this summer, the cousins will learn everything, if they can survive the season. So, definitely a mystery, probably a little scary, um, but it looks like a quick read, and um, definitely looks interesting. So, that's The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. On the back it says, families keep the best secrets even from each other. Mm. Okay, next, we've got, oh, this is a good one I've been waiting for, the sixth book in the Miss Peregrine series. So this is The Desolations of Devil's Acre, which is the sixth novel of Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children, and I believe it is the final um, book in that series. So if you know this Miss Peregrine series, if you've read it, this is probably one you've been waiting for. So I will not tell you what that one's about because I don't want to ruin it, but we will take a jump back to the original Miss Peregrine, and I'll read you the, the the description of that one. A mysterious island, an abandoned orphanage, a strange collection of peculiar photographs. It all waits to be discovered in Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. An unforgettable novel that mixes fiction and photography in a thrilling reading experience. As our story opens, a horrific family tragedy sets 16-year-old Jacob journeying to a remote island off the coast of Wales where he discovers the crumbling ruins of Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. As Jacob explores its abandoned bedrooms and hallways, it becomes clear that Miss Peregrine's children were more than just peculiar. They may have been dangerous. They may have been quarantined on a deserted island for good reason. And somehow, impossible though it seems, they may still be alive. A spine-tingling fantasy illustrated with haunting vintage photography Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children will delight adults, teens, and anyone who relishes an adventure in the shadows. So if you haven't read the Miss Peregrine series, it's a perfect time to start since the last book just came out. So this is the first one. Um, it's a quick one. Uh, they get a little longer as you go on. Um, this is the one we just got in. And you know if you're a fan of Miss Peregrine's that they have pictures, lots of vintage pictures. So there's one from this one. Let me show you another one. Oh, here's another one. So this book is just like the others. It's got lots of pictures. Um, and it looks pretty interesting. So The Desolations of Devil's Acre, the sixth novel of Miss Peregrine's Peculiar Children. All right, let's see what's next. Next we've got Once Upon a Quinceanera by Monica Gomez Hira. Sorry. Um, pretty cover, bright orange. Love it. Carmen Aguilar just wants to make her happily ever after come true. Except, apparently, happily ever after for Carmen involves being stuck in an unpaid summer internship. All she has to do is perform in a ball gown during the summer in Miami. Fine. Except that Carmen's company is hired for her spoiled cousin Ariana's over the top quinceanera. Ariana, a.k.a. the reason Carmen's own coming-of-age celebration ended in utter disaster. And, of course, her new dance partner at work is none other than Mauro Reyes, her most deeply regrettable ex. If 
Carmen is going to move into the future she wants, she needs to leave the past behind. And if she can manage dancing in the blistering heat, fending off Morrow's texts, and stopping Ariana from ruining her own quinceanera, Carmen might just get that happily ever after, after all. So this sounds like a fun, um, light, maybe romance, um, definitely a break from more serious books, Once Upon a Quinceanera by Monica Gomez Hira. Okay, on to the next, The Initial Insult by Mindy McGinnis. That is an interesting cover for sure. Welcome to Amontadio, Ohio, where your last name is worth more than money and secrets can be kept for a price. Tress Montour knows that her family used to mean something until she didn't have a family anymore. When her parents disappeared seven years ago while driving her best friend home, Tress lost everything. The entire town shuns her now that she lives with her drunken one-eyed grandfather at what locals refer to as the White Trash Zoo. Felicity Tornado has it all, looks, money, and a secret. She knows that one misstep could send her tumbling from the top of the social ladder, and she's worked hard to make everyone forget that she was with the Montours the night they disappeared. Felicity has buried what she knows so deeply that even she can't remember what it is, only that she can't look at Tress without feeling shame and guilt. But she'll have to. Tress has a plan. Halloween costume party and an abandoned house provides the ideal situation for Tress to pay, pry the truth from Felicity, brick by brick, as she slowly seals her former best friend into a coal chute. Tress will have her answers, or settle for revenge. In the first book of this duology, award-winning author Minnie McGinnis draws inspiration for Ed, from Edgar Allan Poe and masterfully delivers a dark, propulsive mystery in alternating points of view that unravels a friendship forevermore. So this is The Initial Insult by Minnie McGinnis. As you heard there, it's the first two books. And it is um, uh, kind of a takeoff of an Edgar Allan Poe story, probably The Cask of Amontillado. Um, so check it out if that sounds like your cup of tea. The Initial Insult by Minnie McGinnis. All right. Next, we have one that I know a lot of you have been waiting for, A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah Moss. This is part of the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Um, it is, uh, I believe, uh, Nesta's story. So if you know the Court of Thorns and Roses series, um, which we have here, although we do not have the first one here right now, um, Nesta is one of the sisters um, in the original series, and now she has her own volume. So I'm going to read you what this one's about, even though it's not technically the first, um, but it is um, about a different character, so the story should be new. Uh, Nesta Archeron has always been prickly, proud, swift to anger, and slow to forgive. And ever since being forced into the cauldron and becoming high fae against her will, she struggled to find a place for herself within the strange, deadly world she inhabits. Worse, she can't seem to move past the horrors of the, world, of the war with Highburn and all she lost in it. The one person who ignites her temper more than any other is Cassian, the battle-scarred warrior whose position in recent fairies' night court keeps him constantly in Nesta's orbit. But her temper isn't the only thing Cassian ignites. The fire between them is undeniable, and it only burns hotter as they are forced to work closely together. Meanwhile, the treacherous human queens who returned to the continent during the last war have forged a dangerous new alliance, threatening the fragile peace that has settled over, her realm, over the realms. And the key to halting them might very well rely on Cassian and Nesta facing their haunting past. Against the sweeping backdrop of a world seared by war and plagued with uncertainty, Nesta and Cassian battle monsters from within and without as they search for acceptance and healing in each other's arms. So this is Nesta's story, um, Court of Silver Flames by Sarah Moss, um, the latest in the Court of Thorns and Roses series. So next we have Good Girl, Bad Blood by, by Holly Jackson. Um, this is the second book from the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. Um, it's not 
technically a series in that the uh, characters are the same, but the story is different. So think of it like just a continuation of the character's um, story, but not like like Good Girl's Guide to Murder didn't end with a cliffhanger. This doesn't um, start with the end of that, really. It's just a new story featuring the same characters. So um, Good Girl, Bad Blood. Pip is not a detective anymore. With the help of Ravi Singh, she released a true crime, true crime podcast about the murder case they solved together last year. Though the podcast went viral, Pip insists that her sleuthing days are behind her. But when someone she knows goes missing and the police won't do anything, Pip has no choice but to investigate. Jamie Reynolds disappeared on the very same night the town hosted a memorial for the six-year anniversary of the deaths of Andy Bell and Sal Singh. It has to be a coincidence. To track Jamie down... I'm sorry, it has to be more than a coincidence. To track Jamie down, Pip follows a trail of clues, uncovering more of her town's dark secrets along the way. And this time, everyone is listening. But will she find him before it's too late? So, um, Pip was the character, was the main character in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Um, this is the second book uh, in her um, story, so to speak. Um, kind of like Nancy Drew. She's a detective. Each story is a new mystery. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is a new, or I'm sorry, Good Girl, Bad Blood is the new one in that um, duology. So um, if you liked A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, check out Good Girl, Bad Blood. If you haven't read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, um, check it out. We have it here, although it's checked out right now. Um, and uh, you can read that one first, and then Good Girl, Bad Blood. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. All right. Next, we've got The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. This one's gotten a lot of buzz. Um, let's see, it's got a really, uh, oh, let's see. When a deadly fly flu sweeps the globe, it leaves a shell of the world that once was. Among the survivors are 18-year-old Nico and her dog on a voyage devised by Nico's father to find a mythical portal. A young artist named Kit, raised in an old, abandoned cinema, and the enigmatic deliverer who lives life after life in an attempt to put the world back together. As swarms of infected flies roam the earth, these few survivors navigate the woods of post-apocalyptic New England, meeting others along the way, each on their own quest to find life and love in a world gone dark. The Electric Kingdom is a sweeping exploration of art, storytelling, eternal life, and above all, a testament to the notion that even in an exterminated world, one person might find beauty in another. So that's The Electric Kingdom, kind of timely for the um, stuff we've been living through this year. It's got a really pretty picture on the inside cover, so um, gives you an idea of what it might be like. And the cover itself is pretty intriguing, so... The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. All right, let's see what's next. Next we've got The Queen's Secret by Melissa De La Cruz. And The Queen's Secret is the sequel to The Queen's Assassin, which I have here. So this is The Queen's Assassin. I will tell you what this one is about in case you want to read both um, because they are a sequel and I don't want to spoil this one. Kaladin Holt is the kingdom's deadliest weapon. No one alive can best him in speed, strength, or brains, which is why he's in the Hearthstone Guild's most dangerous, why he's the Hearthstone Guild's most dangerous member. Cal is also the queen's assassin, bound to her by magic and unable to leave her service until the task she set for him is fulfilled. Shadow of the Honey Glade has been training all her life to join the guild, hoping that one day she'll become an assassin as feared and revered as Cal. But Shadow's mother and aunts expect her to serve the crown as a lady of the Renovian court. When a surprise attack brings Shadow and Cal together, they're forced to team up as assassin and apprentice. Even though Shadow's life belongs to the court and Cal's belongs to the queen, they cannot deny their attraction to each other. But now, with war on the horizon and true love at risk, Shadow and Cal will uncover a shocking web of lies that will change their paths forever. So that's the queen's assassin. It's the first one. The second one is The Queen's Secret. Um, I like how the covers are opposite colors. It's really cool. 
Um, this is a really quick read, so together they shouldn't take you that long if you want to read both of them. Um, so check out The Queen's Assassin, The Queen's Secret, both by Melissa De La Cruz. I'm running out of room here. Okay, next we have We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire by Joy McCullough. This is... M. Morales' sister was raped after a frat party. A jury found the attacker guilty on all counts, a remarkable verdict that M. felt more than a little proud of, since her passionate social media advocacy helped dissuade the DA from settling for a plea deal. But victory is short-lived. Justice vanishes as the judge turns the Morales family world upside down again by sentencing her rapist to no prison time. While her family is stunned, M. is sick with rage and guilt. To make matters worse, M tells a reporter that sentence makes her want to learn to use a sword, and the news clip goes viral. M must find a new reason to fight on, and it comes in the unlikely form of the story of a 15th century French noblewoman, Marguerite de Berceau, legendary as the avenging knight for rape victims. We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire is a, scar is a searing and nuanced portrait of a young woman torn between a persistent desire for revenge and a burning need for hope. So, this is a realistic fiction, um, pretty serious topic. We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire by Joy McCullough. All right, only a couple more, a few more left. We've got Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. Those of you who are fans of Shadowhunters um, books, this is the newest and this is one of the Shadowhunter series. This one is The Last Hours um, series. So I have the first one in the last hour series. This is book two. So the first one is Chain of Gold. The second one, Chain of Iron. So I will tell you what Chain of Gold is about um, so I don't spoil Chain of Iron. An inheritance of shadows, a love in chains, an unconquerable foe. Cordelia Carstairs is a shadow hunter a warrior trained since childhood to battle demons. When her father is accused of a terrible crime, she and, sorry, the light is terrible right here. She and her brother travel to London in hopes of preventing the family's ruin. Cordelia's mother wants to, wants to marry her off, but Cordelia is determined to be a hero rather than a bride. Soon, Cordelia encounters childhood friends, James and Lucy Herondale, and is drawn into their world of glittering ballrooms, secret ass assignations, and supernatural salons. Sorry. Where vampires and warlocks mingle with mermaids and magicians. All the while, she must hide her secret love for James, who is sworn to marry someone else. But Cordelia's new life is blown apart when a shocking series of demon attacks devastate London. These monsters are nothing like those that the shadow hunters have fought before. These demons walk in daylight, strike down the unwary with... Un with an uncurable poison and seem impossible to kill. London is immediately quarantined. Trapped in the city, Cordelia's friends discover a dark legacy has gifted them with incredible powers and now forces a brutal choice that will reveal the true cruel price of being a hero. So that is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, the first one. The second one is Chain of Iron. Um, so those are both uh, one of the sub-series is from the Shadowhunters books. So it started with the Mortal Instruments, we had the Infernal Devices, the Dark Artifices, um, and now the Last Hours. So check that out. Next we have Infinity Reaper by Adam Silvera. This is the second book um, in the Infinity Sun series. So this is Infinity Sun. Let's see, I'll tell you what this one's about. Ever since they were young, brothers Emil and Brighton have idolized the Spellwalkers, a vigilante group sworn to protect the world from specters. When the Spellwalkers and other Celestials were born with supernatural powers, specters take them, violently stealing the essence of endangered magical creatures. A gang of specters is growing bolder by the day, and the fear they sow is making it harder for anyone with powers to live peacefully and openly in the world. Shortly after their 18th birthday, Emil and Brighton are attacked by a specter, and in trying to defend his brother, Emil manifests a power that shouldn't be possible, Phoenix Fire, a power that only a specter could have. 
Convinced that he is the key to finally ending the war, the Spellwalkers want Emil to join their ranks, and they're willing to take Brighton too, if that's Emil's condition. For Brighton, even if he's only even if he's powerless, the chance to fight Spectres with his heroes is a dream come true. For Emil, the constant fighting and the painful new power is a waking nightmare. Much as they hate to admit it, the brothers are faced with an undeniable fact. One of them has what it takes to be a hero, but it's not the one who desperately wants it. Balancing epic and intensely personal stakes, best-selling author Adam Silvera's Infinity Sun is a gritty, fast-paced adventure about a magical war generations in the making. Brotherhood, love, and loyalty will be put to the test, and no one will escape the fight unscathed. So that's Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. We have the second one now, Infinity Reaper, also by Adam Silvera. So check those out um, if you're into fantasy. And my last book in this box is a scary cover, scary looking one, Don't Tell a Soul by Kirsten Miller. And the back says, all the best ghosts are girls. So definitely a ghost story, creepy cover. People say the house is cursed. It preys on the weak and young women are its favorite victims. In Louth, they're called the dead girls. All Bram wants is to disappear from her old life from her family's past, and from the scandal that continues to haunt her. The only place left to go is Louth, the tiny town on the Hudson River where her uncle James has been renovating an old mansion. But James is haunted by his own ghosts. Months ago, his beloved wife died in a fire that people say was set by her daughter. The tragedy has left James a shell of the man Bram knew, and destroyed half of the house he has so lovingly restored. The manor is creepy, and so are the locals. The people of Louth don't want outsiders like Bram in their town, and with each passing day she's discovering that the rumors they spread are just as disturbing as the secrets they hide. Most frightening of all are the legends they tell about the dead girls, girls whose lives were cut short in the very house Bram now calls home. The terrifying reality is that the dead girls may have never left the manor, and if Bram looks too hard into the town's haunted past, she might not leave either. So definitely a scary, mystery, haunted house book. So if that is what you really like, definitely check out Don't Tell a Soul by Kirsten Miller. And that's all I've got in this box. Um, I hope you found something that you want to check out. Um, you can put it on hold in the catalog. You can give me a call. You can stop in and pick it up yourself off the shelf um, or send me an email, whatever you want. And I will be back as soon as I have another new box of books to share with you. I hope you have a great week.